welcome you all to the another episode of adarsh vidya connect adarsh connects you to the hither to unknown fields of excellence and open your eyes to the opportunities that galon in this vast world last month we met mr rahul venugopal a renowned made a uh, matte painter working in england today we are going to have with us a celebrity from the fashion world ms vino supraja driven by high passion towards the fashion industry she graduated at a, a french fashion school ifsc paris in shanghai china she won the prestigious golden lotte award from ifsc paris she was a finalist in the china international fashion designers creation contest 2014 and won an international designer award in the contest her work was greatly appreciated by the chinese media including vogue china she presented her collection buoyancy at the 10th anniversary of brooklyn uh, fashion week 2016 and also presented her collection rise at new york fashion week 2018 she graduated in fashion marketing at esmod dubai in 2019 she has won the first place in sustainable fashion runway competition conducted by fashion revolution and got an opportunity to intern with dolce and gabbana dubai I welcome Ms. Vino Supraja to this event on the Adarsh Connect platform on behalf of the management, principal, staff, parents, and students. Thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Thanks a lot to the school for inviting me because I am always excited to talk to children because they are the future, and uh, it's wonderful to meet you all this evening. so uh, before i start talking about uh, the careers in fashion let me just uh, give a quick uh, introduction about my journey so that it's like an ice breaker you know you kind of know what i did and why i did and things like that and then let's talk about fashion let me try sharing my presentation tell me if you can see this yeah can you see Yep. All right. Great. So, um I belong to a very small town called uh, Vantavasi which is near Kanchipuram and uh, I studied architecture in SRM after my 12th and then I did a co- short course on animation learn to do learning to do walk throughs and building 3D modeling and things like that and then I joined uh, MSc Electronic Media in Anna University and then I had a very strong career in radio and television. for 5 years in chennai that is when i had to move to china so without knowing the language i didn't know what to do and that is exactly how i ended up in a fashion school um, because you know when i was researching for to do something you know i because i was super busy back home i didn't want to just uh, stay at home in china without knowing language also so when i was researching i could uh, find only two websites those were in english one was the website of a business school the other one was the website of a fashion school so fashion was sounding exi- exciting and it was ifa paris and so i joined a uh, fashion school in china then from china where i graduated my bachelor's at the age of 35 my second bachelor degree in fashion happened i had to move to us that is where i started my own little you know home studio and i started uh, doing my collections there and from there i had to move to uae again and that's where i did my post graduation in fashion marketing which i graduated last year and uh, now here i am in delhi i have moved again and uh, i own a fashion brand which is a sustainable fashion brand which is based in uae so this is my life story okay so when i joined fashion i was not a fashion designer i was an architect Uh, who has done a short course in animation and who was working in television and media um but when i joined uh, a fashion school in china all i knew was a fashion designer is someone who stitches garments for others because that's what i have seen there is a common uh, 
of that where someone is an independent designer who runs a boutique and uh, i come across uh, words like fashion shows and uh, designers star in the movies i have seen red carpets in film fair awards and things like that but these are not only the avenues the careers available in the fashion world which i realized after joining a fashion school because back then this i am talking about like 10 years ago back then even in india the fashion world was not very organized enough it was it was still very staggered things happening here and there and you know things were not very organized that is exactly when i joined the fashion school so what are the other careers that i came across after i landed up in a fashion school in a bachelor degree of fashion design a fashion designer who is not an entrepreneur he the fashion designer works for a brand for example uh, let's take a very well known uh, fashion brand in india okay let's take this brand called biba we all know right biba so it's not one single person sitting in viva office and designing all the collection all through the year because it's a brand so what happens is there is a chief the ceo of the brand but there is a team of designers who design for the brand so you work in a team there are hierarchies you join as a junior designer and then you become a senior designer and then you become a design manager you know there are several levels there and when you are working for viva whatever you are designing it has to look like it is from the brand brand viva you know there, there is this brand called global desi there is this brand called and there is this brand brand called nicobar all the garments doesn't look similar if you see something you can say oh the, if you see a melange kurta you can say this is from melange right that means the designer cannot sit in the melange office and design like a biba kurta a melange kurta is supposed to be playing just with prints and there is also this brand called w if you have known those kurtas have different types of prints so you have to understand the brand dna you will be working under a boss and there is a corporate hierarchy where you will grow you will join as a junior level designer and then you will grow and you will shift the brands one day you will work in viva the next day you will work in melange the next day you will work in another brand so you will shift across brands and um, this is one stream of becoming a fashion designer and then fashion merchandiser these are the people they do not design okay there is nothing to do with design in this but they have a keen eye on fashion they know what is happening in the fashion world these are the people who are a liaison between the brand and the production for example again let's let's today for today let's take this biba uh, as an example okay because it's easy, it's an easy name so if i am biba Biba doesn't have thousand tailors sitting and stitching salwar kameez every single day for all their stores. Biba only designs. They outsource the garment stitching. There are several factories. You guys are in Coimbatore. You, of course, you know there are so many factories stitching for several brands, right? So these merchandisers are the people who are are the middlemen between the uh, communicate like they communicate between the brand and the production. They negotiate with the manufacturers. They find out who are the manufacturers who you know uh, quote cheaper prices they are this is not selling stop designing this so they are the kind of people who tell you and they also analyze what is in demand what is in current trend what needs to be there so they go design but these are the people who you know kind of work with numbers and uh, coordination and organizing things putting things together so this is such profession and then fashion buyer this is a fashion buyer is not a, a customer a, a, a buyer doesn't mean in the fashion world that you go to a shop and i buy so i become a buyer no again for example let's take uh, this store lifestyle inside lifestyle you have many brands if you have seen you must have seen uh, as we said melange there is biba there is global desi there is and there is ginger and then you will find levi's jeans all these are separate brands but in the lifestyle you will have all these garments together right so lifestyle will have a buyer 
that person will know uh, for example biba will have like in a specific, in a specific biba will produce some um, 40 pieces 40 different styles 40 different kurtas this buyer's responsibility is to choose what in those 40 styles will work in their shop for example lifestyle in adiar will have different garment will sell different garments from lifestyle in tambaram what is a super hit in lifestyle adiar may not be a super hit in lifestyle trompet you know what i mean it depends on the area it depends on the customers in that area lifestyle in chennai may not sell the same things that are being sold in lifestyle trichy or coimbatore because the culture is different and the customer behavior is different the customer demographics is different similarly lifestyle india whatever is being sold in lifestyle india may not sell well in lifestyle dubai because the customers are different right so a buyer of a store has to choose what will sell in my my store what similarly uh, i was for example i was a medium size a uh, person in china but i was an extra small in us that depends on the overall size of the all the people in the country so the person in this this particular buyer should also know that how many mediums will sell if i'm going to order a skirt a short skirt how many extra smalls i should order how many mediums i should order how many large i should order so this guy this fashion buyer will know what will sell in their place and how to order they will communicate with the brand and they know the customer demographics and they know the customer psychology and they know what will sell in their brand the, this term this particular term called fashion buyer has different uh, meanings in different countries that i have seen in the rest of the world a fashion buyer is whatever i have told you now like you know they sit in a departmental store departmental store is like a multi brand store and then they order if it's a huge multi brand store there will be many buyers each buyer will uh, you know manage four to five brands he is the buyer for this 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 brand so it will be like that but in india uh, a buyer is someone who buys for several things you know because i was working with a garment uh, back in erode garment factory back in erode they call the brand as buyers iniki iniki buyer varanga i was like who is coming because it's a manufacturing facility you can call them merchandiser but why are you calling them buyer i was confused but then i realized that they call the brands as buyers so this particular term called fashion buyer has different interpretation in india at different places but in the rest of the world fashion buyer is someone who sits in a multi brand store and he decides what will sell and what will not sell in the store and then he orders only those from the brand and fashion stylist again these people don't design these people don't design separate garments but these people create looks curate looks with different brands uh, uh, like you know a look can have shoes from a different brand skirt from a different brand top from a different brand coolers from a different brand hat from a diff- different brand but overall they, they these are the people who will create a look uh, these people will have a lot of interaction with different brands and they will have a good rapport with the brands because you know how it works right like for example if i am dressing a star for a red carpet i will buy shoes from jimmy chu or i will buy a dress from sabya sachi i will buy a good jewelry from uh, some diamond store and then i will have a deal with them saying we will return all this back and we will give you credits like we will post it on social media and then we will tag you saying garment from sabya at sabya sachi and then they will tag everyone so these stylists are the people who will create the whole look talk with different brands put everything together dress the celebrity these are the people who decide on how the makeup should be how the hair should be how the uh, eyes should be and everything basically these stylists are used in photo shoots video shoots film shoots ad shoots television shoots and red carpets 
previously during film shoots they used to create costumes for all the uh, characters you know but these days not they they don't do it they hire stylists who bring in different garments from different brands and make the hero or heroine or the character well but this is a very very hard working profession because if there is a runway you are supposed to be present from the time the celebrity is getting dressed you are supposed to dress them and then you are supposed to follow them you have to have a carry an iron at the back backstage and whenever they are going in the front stage for getting pictures clicked you have to steam them you, if you have seen all these um, uh, you know met gala or oscar red carpet videos you might have seen these uh, heroines wearing big gowns there are two people who are carrying their gowns at the back when they are climbing stairs or you know before they stand for the picture they will be arranging the uh, the skirt so that it falls nicely these are the stylists and st- assistant stylists so it's a lot of hard work because uh, you know there will be night events and there will be night shoots if it's an ad shoot and uh, photo shoot video shoot and everything you need to be present there and you need to run around before the shoot to collect all these garments from different brands and then you have to have a fitting with that person so that it fits them well and things like that being a fashion stylist there are few new streams of profession that are gaining momentum these days stylist is a profession but from this there is something called image consultation that's coming up these days like for example if i am suddenly becoming a ceo i was working somewhere else in a in a in a company and uh, i am joining a new company as a ceo now i want to really have certain look i want to have a uh, a personality to be set you go to them and then you tell them that you know i want to have a very um uh, a very strong personality i want to look this way and then they will tell you what to wear what not to wear there is also a new thing called wardrobe consultation you call them they will open your wardrobe and then they will tell you hey you can wear this with this this with this this is not working you can give it off to someone else this shoe will go with this just you know giving ideas of how to style yourself and there is another one new uh, stream that is coming up which is called personal shopper let's imagine um, kate middleton the princess of uh, united kingdom if she wants to buy uh, a night dress she cannot go to all the shops and buy night dress right how will she go she is the princess so she has someone called a personal shopper who is basically a stylist this person has to has to know the size of the celebrity they will run around they will collect four or five or 10 or 15 options for whatever she need they will bring it home and then they will decide what looks good and then this person has to go return it back this is a profession these days which is called a personal shopper uh, back in dubai many of the sheikhs uh, the royal families have a personal stylist for every single woman of the family and then they have deals with the when a wedding comes in, a, in the royal family and these people also have to have a, a note of what that princess is wearing and what the other princess is wearing so that these people don't end up in the same garment from the same brand so this is again a new profession that's coming up under fashion styling costume designer this is where you actually create a costume for a movie or for stage plays for example bahubali bahubali was not styling it was not put from different brands together and then created the uh, rajamata's look it was created it was designed it was made for that particular character again costume designing is a very very hard working job there will be outdoor shoots there will be night shoots you will have to create you will have to work with your own set of tailors to make it you have to interact with the set designer with the cameraman with the director you have to talk to them before designing while designing after designing during the shoot you have to be present in the sets you have to understand the character if it is raja mata she has to look in a very dignified way the, the character is very very powerful in bahubali if it is devasena she has to look in a way very pretty way yet a very strong character so you need to understand the character and create garments for it and it is a lot of hard work 
designing for movies is no joke it is a lot of hard work and you need to know what scene they are shooting on one particular day and so you have to be ready with everything you can't even uh, forget anything back home and then go to the location and then run back you have to have a good sense of continuity uh, because they don't uh, shoot in the same order one day they will shoot one thing and then after 15 days they will shoot the same thing you have to remember what earrings the heroine was wearing what ring the heroine was wearing you have to this needs a lot of organization skills and a lot of hard work and a lot of creativity as well fashion communication it's more like visual communication like you know uh, it's more to do with media uh, for example working in vogue uh, it's 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 lot to do with journalism photography graphic design and the branding like you can design logos and flyers and things like that writing copywriting for uh, fashion ads set design for fashion shoots whatever you are doing in visual communication this is the fashion angle to it and uh, you will be designing a lot of designing and doing a lot and fashion pr public these are the people, these are very powerful people actually the middlemen between designers brands and media houses there are a lot of vogue is a well known uh, uh, magazine there is cosmopolitan there is gq there are several things if you see the picture in this marks and spencers in cosmopolitan so if you want if i am running my, uh, my brand if i want my brand to go on the cover of vogue india i have to have a very strong pr house i have to have a deal with them like a contract with them they will place me on the respective uh, magazines and then we will have a uh, word with the magazine and you know these this is more like a middleman uh, these are more like middlemen who will put you at the right place and these these fashion pr people know where to place you for example if i am a luxury brand if i am a brand okay call me if i am sabya sachi okay what is the point if a sabya sachi ad comes in kumudam kumudam is not my target but it makes a lot of sense when sabya sachi ad comes in vogue right because my target customer will be that not kumudam so this fashion pr people will suggest you where you should place your ads and how to promote which runway to go and which red carpets you should uh, send your garments to and which star you should dress and uh, uh, you know which events you should dress and things like that so these are like any other pr company these are fashion pr people who have connections strong connections with stars with the magazines uh, with the film world and with the models and with the runway producers and everyone this is again a very strong and powerful career in fashion visual merchandising so this is to do with the look and feel of the store for example we are entering a store we see mannequins on the window and we see them wearing something there is a visual merchandiser who decides what those mannequins should wear and then as you enter inside there may be a small table uh, let's uh, let's imagine um, a men's store for for a, for a for a different reason this time so if it's a store of indian terrain okay so you see uh, all the mannequins wearing uh, formals maybe and then you enter there is a small table which has all ties and uh, and uh, maybe uh, scarves on the table and then on the sides you have shirts displayed and again you move forward uh, you see again three mannequins three men wearing casuals and then you can see t-shirts displayed so who decides all this the person who is uh, behind this is a visual merchandiser he decides the look and feel of the store the placements of the garments this again depends on the customer's uh, psychology because you know uh, the best sellers always in a brand the best sellers are the small smaller pieces whoever wants to own a brand for example if i want to own something um, from chanel which is an extremely expensive brand i cannot afford to wear or buy a chanel gown paying thousands and thousands of dollars but i can buy a chanel lipstick which is affordable for me i can still own that piece of brand so all these selling things you know which quick moving saleable things will be placed 
as soon as you enter in a round table in a in a, in a very attractive way that is why even when you go to all these uh, multi brand stores like lifestyle the base the ground floor will always have these cosmetics uh perfumes and lipsticks and nail polishes from big brands so if you want to own a big brand by these types so it it has to do with a lot of uh, customer psychology and what the mannequins has to wear and space planning where we should place what how the window should be and the windows are, are dressed up differently during christmas uh, it is dressed up differently during pongal we can see karumbu and paana and all during pongal times the visual merchandiser decides all this and fashion e-commerce which is a booming business these days uh whatever happens in a big fashion brand the same thing happens in a smaller scale in an e-commerce brand the same visual merchandising happens in e-commerce also so the visual merchandiser here decides when you open the website what comes as your cover page and what are the first four uh, garments that you are going to place and what is the next story that is going to come when you scroll down where is this button where is all that will be decided by uh, a visual merchandiser in an e-commerce business and uh, how, how, and mitra if we have a brand and that they will have their own buyers who will communicate with different brands and then they will you know order garments for this brand and for their own it also uh, depends on uh, it also involves a lot of customer analysis how many uh, people have added what garment to their cart and why what is their cart size and why did they abandon that cart and what is best selling and why and you know everything happens in a smaller scale in an e-commerce uh, place fashion business management okay there are people who are who think that they are not good at art i can't draw well uh, i can't sketch but i like fashion um what to do so there are there is this option called uh, fashion business management i did my post graduation in this so which involves luxury brand management entrepreneurship managerial positions so if you do this mba in luxury brand management or uh, you know uh, mba in fashion management or things like that there are several options these days if you do this you will go on the uh, like a general manager for marketing uh, dolce gabbana india so your your jobs will be on that side not on the designing part of it so it depends on what exactly you want to do in the end and then you can choose if you are good at if you are interested in business aspects and if you are also interested in the fashion world this is the best place to be so that you can club both of them so next steps these are all the options that i have come across personally in my journey of uh, fashion for the past 10 years so what will be the next steps i see i came from a very very uh, small town uh, a town which is smaller than coimbatore i was just talking to a principal about this area. so i didn't know anything about fashion but i i studied fashion in the uh, asian capital of fashion called china in shanghai so i had a great global exposure but now that i i talk to many students from several fashion schools across india i kind of Uh, get a feeling that many of the students don't have exposure uh, to the rest of the world what is happening in the global scenario of fashion so please try to get global exposure Do, don't just uh, look into the fashion news of india don't just stick to manish malhotra's and uh, sabya sachis there is rest of the world there are other brands there are other great designers start reading about them start seeking about them and then you know if you come across saying uh, uh, some runway is really good and uh, they write about this designer as he is extraordinary go see why he is extraordinary where is he from why that work is called extraordinary so i'm saying expand your horizon don't just stick to what is happening in india get global exposure and create a portfolio portfolio is very very important see um the 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 requirements for admission 
differs from college to college. Some colleges ask for portfolios. Some colleges don't ask for portfolio. Some colleges have their own entrance exams. Some colleges have both entrance and portfolio. So it depends. Portfolio is nothing but a collection of all your best artwork. So you cannot create a portfolio overnight, right? It has to be a collection of your work over the time. So look for inspiration. Now that you have the computer and internet in front of you, you have loads of resources in front of you. Look for what is portfolio? How does a portfolio look? And what all a portfolio should have? A portfolio should express, should tell who you are. And the number of pages you can send as a portfolio also depends on uh, depends uh, on the university you are applying to. It differs from place to place. You know, there are some universities who just say that, you know, send us two pages of portfolio. That's it. And some people don't have any restrictions. You can send as many as you want. But your portfolio should tell them who you are, what is your skill level, what, what is your exposure level, what is your thought process, what is your taste level, how do you think it should so, show the progress, it should show the process. You know what I mean? Now um, there are several um, institutes who help you to create portfolios. I, I just met someone uh, recently who runs such an institute back in Chennai who helps students to create portfolios alone. And there are several institutes who prepare students to uh, enter into, you know, uh, NIST or uh, any other entrance examination. They prepare students just for that. So make sure you get the right exposure. Make sure you start making art and uh, start researching on what is what is a portfolio and how to create it and what is the and also make sure that the, your standard of work has to be really top notch do not look into portfolios which have been presented for local colleges just see what people have presented for colleges in london see what people have presented for colleges in new york so that you know that is the global standard if you are almost there, you will automatically be placed anywhere in India and choose the right college. Please, this is very, very important because as I told you, I have been talking to many children these days from fashion schools and the amount of exposure they have is really, really bad in many places. In some places, they are very good. So choose the right college. See how much of industry exposure you get in your college. Mm, uh, because, you know, when I was in um, uh, China, I came to India when I, I, I was still a student. I came to India for a uh, three month uh, holiday. Uh, in, I think it was after second, between second year to third year or something. So I came across uh, this institute saying this is a fashion institute. Uh, we give a certification course for three months, you can gain a certificate in fashion designing and things like that. I was bored, so I thought like, let me go. They are giving some certification. Maybe it will help me for my resume. I'll tell you what, it was really, really sad to see what they were teaching. Okay, so what I'm saying is there are several places around calling themselves as a fashion school. Please make sure, please go visit the place. Please ask them where their students are working now, the past alumni, where they are all working see their work, see, uh, ask them what is their internship, is there any internship opportunities with great brands and uh, you know when you are aiming at something aim high, look for the best place, Not do not settle for uh, mediocre, mediocre places. So please select the right college which gives a lot of opportunities, which gives a lot of exposure. Uh, it can be anywhere in the world, it can be anywhere in India, Please be brave enough to go see it, go face it, stay alone and study there. You are all, all the children, you are all like, now everything is on your phone. Everything is accessible. It is not like before where you write only letters to your parents and, the, and you make uh, trunk calls to your parents. So if we are all closely knit wherever you are. So if you can, if you can write college, go to the best college, wherever it is and be brave be, be you you are all street smart okay you can survive anywhere so be open and choose the right college prepare for the entrance exams 
as i told you nift has a separate entrance exam and there are several other colleges like for example pearl academy they have a separate entrance exams so do some research and find out what how what is the pattern of their entrance exams and see how the students are performing there prepare for their entrance exams and apply and if you are thinking that fashion is a lot of if you want to become a fashion designer thinking that fashion is a lot of fun and i can dress up very well and go to college every single day i can draw all the human figures and then i can have fun i am very sorry no fashion is a lot of hard work not only fashion any creative education it's a lot of hard work and why again why i am asking you to choose the right college is teaching art itself is an art it's not like math in math if a teacher has to teach he can teach you 1 plus 1 is 2 but in art it is not 1 plus 1 is 2 it is getting the style of that student out if you if for example if it is an art if you call something art raja ravi verma's painting was also art picasso's painting was also art both are are best in their own ways right da vinci's artwork was also there so the, the a teacher who is teaching art should not try to bring his style into the student he has to find out the style of the student and bring it out which happens only with the right uh, teachers as i told you before this is why i told you my, a little background about myself i did two different art courses one uh, architecture in india and one uh, fashion abroad with the teachers who were all french there was a clear difference in the way that the art has been taught that is why i am saying please choose the right college and fashion or any other art field is a lot of hard work you will have to stay up for long hours you will have to stay up throughout night if you want to become successful otherwise you can just you know party and uh, fool around and become a mediocre fashion designer but if you want to excel learn the craft and when you are looking for college please find out the college that uh, you know that teaches you pattern making that teaches you cutting that teaches you sewing that teaches you all the industry necessary things like grading and then a electra a software to uh, create pattern making on the computer and everything you know uh, because there are some fashion schools who you know give diplomas just in 3 months 6 months 9 months teaching to draw only the silhouettes the croquis no that is not enough you can hire you can always hire uh, a tailor and ask him to do stuff but you need to know the craft only then when the tailor says no madam this cannot be done you can tell him hello move i will show you how it can be done it's the same even when you do architecture you cannot just design Uh, random buildings and ask the uh, structural engineer or civil engineer to work on it you need to know whether that building is makeable is feasible whether it will stand or not similarly when you are a fashion designer you need to know how a dress will stand when it is made in cotton how a dress will stand when it is made in silk how a dress will stand when it is made in linen there are a lot of things you need to understand the textile and there are other streams like accessory design leather design and uh, textile design so there are all, all these things which you will be exposed when you land in the right fashion school so first identify the right fashion school be prepared to work really really hard learn every nook and corner of the craft and art only then when you actually go into the real job world you will know where you are standing how you can move forward and how you can come up in your career so these these are all the careers that i have come across so far thank you so much for uh, uh, listening to this and uh, tell me if you have any questions i hope it was useful ask me anybody wants to ask anything hey if there are if if you if you are feeling uh, shy to ask you can also i think you can also text right in this chat text me i can also speak in tamil so if you can talk in tamil also i can answer 
so whichever way if you have any doubts please feel free to ask madam yeah madam you have achieved a lot of great thing in sustainable fashion since you have become a fashion designer what are the first thing that has inspired you to undergo the sustainable fashion fantastic okay that's that's my <laughs> quote now uh, see i started off as a fashion designer like anyone else okay like i was attracted by the glitz and glamour of fashion the runways and the movies and everything but uh, i had a teacher uh, back in dubai uh, where i did my post graduation he is the one who told me that fashion is the second most polluting industry on earth that was shocking because nobody told me this before and in the fashion world it was not communicated much and i read more about it and then i really came to know that this industry is abusing land water atmosphere human beings and everything so that is when i realized that you know i am doing something i don't want to be a part of an industry which is this bad you know i don't want to be feeling uh, guilty every single day by doing this so i wanted to uh, kind of uh, i have i've always wanted to kind of mix my uh, purpose together so this was the ideal for me and uh, uh, hello hello madam i am rajan from adarsh vidya kendra yeah ma i want to ask you a question can you differentiate uh, the indian fashion world with paris paris okay. is famous for fashion mm. okay i'll tell you what uh, not just paris i will tell you india and the rest of the world there are some differences but they, there are they are huge differences the main difference which i am very unhappy about is the fashion industry in india is so interlinked so interlinked with movies if you are, if you want if you are a well known fashion designer you must have dressed stars you must have done some movies but actually in the rest of the world fashion industry is here and movies are here these two come together only during red carpets during the awards and that's it and uh, maybe during some weddings this designer will dress for the star or things like that that's it the whole culture of having a, a star as a show stopper itself happens only in india the super mo- models are supposed to be the show stoppers in the rest of the world but here the uh, the stars are the show stoppers and the minute you a- you apply for a runway the question they ask you is which star has worked for you why should a star work for me there are models for working but you know the the fashion world and the cinema world are very much interlinked here in india and then one more thing is which i am very proud about in india we have a very long very ancient history of textile so we have our own textile and our own styles but in the rest of the world they don't have this long history of top printing or techniques you know basically or weaving or anything so we have this rich tradition so that makes us see that is why uh, when when i was studying in china all my teachers were french the minute i told them that i am from india they were all so excited because for them india is like a dream land of textiles and whatever i wear whenever i wear a simple salwar kurta they will be like wow who is this from india oh it is so pretty and because you know we have our own culture our own colors our own history and things like that so that way we are looked up by the rest of the world because of our culture tradition and heritage of fashion that we have so what is something is wrong you let to repeat what you said can you hear now yeah right okay so we are we are we are being looked up by the rest of the world for the history and culture of uh, textile and tradition that we have 
but sorry to say these days we have started copying the western world and we are kind of forgetting what we already have which is so rich in tradition and heritage uh, and we are being looked up just for that if we are going to copy the western world and not do whatever we used to do traditionally the 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 amount of respect is going to come down so the, the similarity i mean the difference is the major difference that i see is these two cinema and culture madam uh, how would you describe your personal style oh, yes. okay <laughs> all right see personal style uh, comes from your personality okay for example i will tell you the all the icons in the world have their own personal style style even fashion icons for example uh, if you have not heard of this name his name, name was karl lagerfeld okay k a r l l a g e r f e l d google and see okay he was the head of channel for many years after madam channel he was like the head of channel he just passed away a couple of years ago i think last year yeah if you see he always used to wear a high collar white shirt and a black suit that's that's what he always used to wear and if you see gandhi who is a great icon he always used to wear two pieces of linen alone which was a very very strong political statement if you see ambedkar he used to wear full suit which was a very strong social statement if you see ms subbulakshmi she used to wear a nice kanjivaram pattu saree even when she went to sing in un and there was a color inventor in her name called ms blue she was a fashion icon because she had a personal style if you see indira gandhi she always used to wear our local handloom heritage uh, sarees so a personal style comes exactly from who you are how you were grown up what are the influences that you had in your life and what are your values what do you want to convey to the world by your look you know what i mean it is not you cannot just say that i am going to wear only this from now on there has to be a reason behind you have to believe in why you are wearing it and you know if you have all this you automatically become an icon and if you see all the icons will have a personal style they they never copied anyone or any star to look different to look you know uh, fashionable they just wore what they believed they conveyed something very very valuable to the world and their their personal style was was a huge message to the world so personal style comes from who you are what you believe in what your values are now Ma another question uh, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years good question kanna but you know what see you you have seen the design of my life right i started off in architecture and then i have done many things and then i have been going around uh, different countries every 3 years okay so i i basically stopped the planning because i decided that if i plan god is standing up there and laughing at me having a good laugh at my plans so i totally stopped planning plan panna adu nadakamaatengidu adnal just go with the flow take the opportunity whatever comes your way take the grab the opportunity if whether you know or don't know doesn't matter if something comes your way just grab it and then figure out how to do it so just say yes grab all the opportunities that are coming your way see everything as an opportunity and then let's see even i am very curious to know where i am after 10 years let me see i'll tell you <laughs> hello uh, good evening i am kamarajini uh, from economic uh, action Let me first tell you. We uh, had so to the end one end from South Korea. Uh, uh, good inspiration. Yes, ma'am. Your voice is very good. Camera audio is not clear. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah, now I can hear. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let me have spoke to the young mind from South India, rocking the world. That oh, I was proud. How it is a time. The first time we got the senior secondary ma. Uh, so I I should thank my 
travel to bring the right person to inspire my economic students because the mountain was and few more side go up to the young mind walking you didn't think that where you will be but definitely you will be in a different place that time also you will come to adish i pray to god to give you a good ladder to you thank you so much thank you so much ma'am thank you so much that's really heartwarming to listen thank you very much hello ma'am hi uh, my name is pratika and uh, my question is uh, could you tell us how to stay update with fashion like what is the current trend and how do we get to know it okay see uh, when you say current trend just don't look at uh, uh, the whatever comes on pinterest or anything just keep looking at pinterest also there are some websites that you can follow okay vogue vogue of uh, us vogue of uh, you know uk and uh, vogue of rest of the world vogue of india also uh, and there is this uh, website called business of fashion which writes uh, if you are interested in business of fashion they write about the business side of it how the industry is doing how the retail market is doing how the covid situation is doing and uh, things like that uh, and one more thing kana which i al- also wanted to mention earlier which i forgot see uh, great fashion designers right they always have fashion is not a separate um, industry of creativity okay fashion is very much interlinked with the art world so all the fashion designers even in the past picasso and uh, coco chanel were very close friends there were authors if you see they used to tell uh, i wish i lived those days in paris if you go to the cafes uh, and uh, in the evenings you can see artists and authors and architects and fashion designers all being friends sitting and discussing art so i would say following fashion is important also follow all the other forms of art see what is happening in the book world follow authors because you get inspiration from books i have made a collection inspired from this book called kite runner so follow books follow art sadly the only art form that is being celebrated in india is cinema again we don't celebrate fine arts we don't celebrate anything else apart from cinema but we have so many artists around go see art exhibitions follow the interviews of all these artists follow the interviews of musicians follow the interviews and uh, you know follow all the creative industry as a whole and also follow the fashion industry because fashion is interlinked with all these things it is it is you know the, the art is not like a, a formula that you apply it is an influence that comes from several exposure so put yourself in the art world and get exposed to all different forms of art when you are planning a trip when you are coming to for example when you are visiting rajasthan if you are planning a jaipur udaipur trip ask them take me to block printing there is a block printing museum apparently in jaipur do some research and ask your parents take me there i want to see it there is kutch in gujarat which is supposed to be i i want to visit all these places i have never been here that's why i am just saying my bucket list here so there is kutch which is like a craft world and uh, you know there are several places around india like this go there try photography try urban sketching even though you want to become a fashion designer try all these things because art is 360 degrees it will groom you it will groom your thought process you know what i mean so follow fashion follow all the art forms appreciate try uh, learn to appreciate different art forms and learn to be in the art, art world put yourself in the middle of the art world and immerse yourself in art you will become a great fashion designer thank you ma'am ma'am what according to you is the favorite part of being a fashion designer and what are your greatest strength and weakness in your industry Okay. <laughs> all right see what i my brand basically i design my textile okay so i design my prints so what i do is i treat my garments as my canvas so i take an in, a, inspiration and then i design my prints and then the prints lead me to the garments so my print will design whether decide whether it will become a pant or whether it will become a shirt or whether it will become a skirt or anything 
so for me i first create my textile and then i make garments out of it so the best part i like is choosing the inspiration and then choosing the color and then making those prints then testing those prints on fabric and seeing how it is coming there is a lot of back and forth in the process so this is the part that i really love doing and uh, my strength i think is forgetting my age and uh, being more uh, workaholic and no <laughs> torturing everyone saying that i need to work i need to work getting restless if there is work and my weakness is i think all the entrepreneurs if there are parents who are entrepreneurs will know this see being an entrepreneur if you have your own business there is no boss there is no deadline nobody is going to question you if you have not finished something today you can do it tomorrow you can launch a collection you can not launch a collection you can place a ad not place a ad there is no compulsion you need constant self motivation to do your work every single day you can start your work at 10 o'clock 12 o'clock you can close the office for one day who is going to question you if you are if you are the boss right having the constant self motivation is very very important i try to be self motivated all the time but my weakness is sometimes sometimes there are low days for me as well where you know i just try to ah it's okay yeah let's work on sunday let's sleep today and you know so that is my weakness that i am still working on but yeah it is a long journey i, I need to get there so so sweet ma'am ma thank you so much welcome ma'am uh, what are the qualifications required for a fashion designing career for a career see that's what it depends on what you want to become okay so if you want to become a stylist uh, there are styling courses or even fashion studying fashion design as a bachelor will help or you can do post graduation in styling or if you want to uh, get into a job in magazines or uh, you know things like that like coding ad creation fashion ad creation and things like that you need to have your education in fashion communication major so that is very important and uh, if you if you want to get into the uh, corporate side of it like becoming a general manager of marketing for so and so brand and things like that fashion business uh, major will help so you have to decide where you want to work which stream you want to choose and then you decide on what you have to study but i think uh, the deciding on the major can happen in uh, in later stage in your master stage initially if you are doing a bachelor in fashion design you will kind of get exposed to everything and then from by the by the final year you will know where your strength is and you will know where you want to go and then you can decide on what to do as a master and then where you want to end up in career thank Madam, you ma'am sir can ma i want to ask you this please asa from the study of our school i want to ask you a question said, you are yeah. very successful person in your field what do you want to give a wonderful message to our children through your experience see i'll tell you what any 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 industry you go okay you either you become a doctor engineer fashion designer um, film director or dancer or anything just two things work hard and have the right attitude even if you are a hard worker if your attitude is not right you are not going to flourish in life your attitude Absolutely. is important attitude meaning always be ready to learn always understand that we don't know everything first convince yourself that there are still things around you which you can learn and please be open for suggestions don't be arrogant please stay grounded and always be humble even if your talent is lesser if your attitude is higher you will still make it big there are people whose talents are sky high and with bad attitude they just don't flourish attitude is everything and hard work is everything if you have just these two things whatever you do in life even cooking even if you end up in your kitchen if you have these two things right you will be the best cook of the world
ma'am yeah uh, ma'am you said the fashion industry is the second most polluting uh, industry how can we tackle this situation see i'll tell you what all these all the industries are polluting but you know why fashion has suddenly become the second most polluting industry that is because we have started buying more that is the reason the you, you know there, there is a survey which says an average human being person uses only 20 percentage of their wardrobe effectively rest of the 80 percentage we buy not knowing why we are buying we buy we keep it in the wardrobe and then by the end of 2 uh, 3 years we realize we never wore it and then either we throw it or give it to someone how big was our grandmother's wardrobe if you remember how big was your mother's wardrobe and how big is your wardrobe why do we need so many clothes and why have we come into this conclusion that repeating a garment is a sin who told us that repeating the same sari for another kalyanam is a sin <laughs> but we all have you know you know why previously only these film stars never used to repeat television stars you know the, when the news readers come they never used to repeat but all the other normal people we used to repeat but now we don't repeat you know why because we are able to afford we can buy so we are buying happily buying but you know what is happening we are getting you you ask me the right question we are getting a t-shirt for say some 200 rupees okay we are getting a t-shirt on a sale in some store for 200 rupees everybody will have profit share in the 200 rupees right the store owner the shop owner will have a profit share and then the the person the logistics person the person who sent it by cargo he will have a share the brand owner will have a profit share and then the wholesaler will have a profit share the garment factory owner will have a profit share who there are some five to six people right now if we think have a profit share in the, the raw material cost is there so in a 200 rupees t-shirt with the raw material these many people are having a profit share you think they are all reducing their profit to give it to you for that cheap price how do you get it so cheap when so many people are sharing their profits because in a factory there is a factory worker who is sitting and sewing day and night in bangladesh in cambodia in india and several places these the wages of these people are so less that we getting we are getting it cheap so for us to get the t-shirt for such a cheap price a garment worker is being crushed so the whole idea is we are buying too much for no reason we have stopped repeating garments we are buying for like you know our wardrobe used to have stories if you ask your grandmother she will tell a story for every sari idu tata modal deepavali ki vaangi kottathu idu unga mama modal sambalathila vaangi kottathu all that now do we have stories in the t-shirt audi thallupadi la vaangnadu in the t-shirt in the sale la vaangnadu how why the garments are not special anymore we don't have wardrobe stories we just started buying because the consumption has increased so much the pollution the industry is causing is increasing so what i tell everyone is please please proudly repeat it is okay to repeat if some auntie is coming and asking you in the podava da na the kalyanthla katla say yes if you are being judged for wearing the same sari again it is not your problem it is that auntie she has a major problem in her mind right so please repeat please wear what you are wearing buy only if it is necessary i am not saying don't buy anything okay if you are going to banaras if you are going to kanjipuram buy a kanjipuram sari the weaver will make some money out of it but just don't buy something because it is available on sale abbe nadandu pombodu mall la sale paathu ullu nolanju buying something for no reason is what is creating this trouble for the world just a minute i'll switch on the light yeah getting that ah hmm so what we can do from our level is don't buy unnecessary we let us let us okay uh, we have seen what gandhi ji was, was wearing right 
ஜஸ்ட் டூ பீசஸ் ஆஃப் லின்னன் ஒரு கட்ட செருப்பு ஒரு ஒரு கண்ணாடி ஒரு கைத்தடி ஹி ரிபீட்டட் த சேம் திங் த்ரூ அவுட் இஸ் லைஃப் ஆ டிட் இட் மேக் ஹிம் எனி லெஸ் வாசன் ஹி கிரேட் வாஸ் ஹி வேரிங் எவ்ரி சிங்கிள் டே கார்மெண்ட் விச் வாஸ் நாட் ரிப்பீட்டட் ஸோ கார்மெண்ட் டசன் மேட்டர் வாட் யூ ஆர் இன்சைட் இஸ் வாட் மேட்டர்ஸ் ஸோ ப்ளீஸ் டு நாட் பை விதவுட் எனி ரீசன் தெர் இஸ் அ ரீசன் இஃப் தெர் இஸ் அ ஸ்பெஷல் அக்கேஷன் இஃப் இட் இஸ் அ ஸ்பெஷல் கார்மெண்ட் பை just don't buy because you just saw it you you want to buy it. you know what i mean so that's how we can reduce the pollution from our side thank madam, you madam how do you measure your success okay <laughs> it's a very spiritual question kanna <laughs> what is success is a very big question okay see i after all the experiences i have in my life i think making money or getting fame or living in a big house nothing is success end of the day if you are happy with what you are doing if you are enjoying the process of whatever you are doing always i always tell even my son you know don't work for what you for a trophy just don't work for some trophy and then say that if i get that i am the successful person i need the trophy no every day do some do a work because you like that work enjoy that work enjoy the process keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it whatever fame money award whatever comes these are all the by products if you work hard these things will come but don't work for that keep working because you love that job love what you are doing enjoy what you are doing and whatever work you are doing every single day do it with all your heart and everything will come money fame will come will go uh, so success for me is every day doing whatever i like in the right way it has to be done thank you mama have a question mam yeah. what are the every challenges fee- Enama? what are the challenges faced by uh, faced in this field and how did you overcome a successful woman okay see uh, Ma'am, what are the challenges faced got it got it see i'll tell you what when i joined oh. when i joined fashion right i had zero exposure in fashion okay because i was from a small town in fashion na i didn't even know a b c d of fashion and i was in chennai in 2011 in chennai we didn't have big brands we didn't have big malls so i didn't even know the names of big brands all i knew was globus pantaloons lifestyle and our local indian brands that's it but when i joined fashion in china i had my classmates who wanted to become fashion designers so they were all had a great exposure they the first day i remember in my class they had a discussion on the fall winter collection of dior and some person called john galliano and he was the designer of dior which i came to know later and they were all discussing saying it is nice this piece was nice i was like oh my god what have i gotten myself into i don't understand anything who are these people what are they talking about by the end of the class i came home and i started crying at home to my husband and my son saying i think i made a very wrong decision i don't know anything these guys are like talking so much they all draw so well see i am an architect okay i can also sketch but architecture involves only straight lines in the drawing the maximum curve you will draw is the trees in the building but sketching fashion is different you are supposed to draw human figures human pose you know if 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 you if a human figure is wearing a silk dress it will fall in certain way if the same is wearing a cotton dress it will fall in a different way you are supposed to sketch i didn't know all this so the next day i decided so there is this technique called saranagadi technique okay if you don't know anything just go fall on the feet of the teacher and tell him sir <laughs> that is exactly what i did i met every single teacher i told them sir i don't know anything about fashion whatever you spoke in class yesterday everything was sounding greek and latin to me now tell me what i should do so every time when i ask very very basic question 
they knew that i didn't know anything okay so they took their time out and then they came and helped me so this was a major challenge the second challenge was sewing i have never even stitched a button in my life my mother used to tell me so many times to learn to stitch a button on a shirt i used to tell her ah tailor kita kurtu i don't want to learn okay but i ended up <laughs> doing it all my life so i couldn't stitch a straight line again i used to cry i used to go to the bathroom and call my husband who is in the office and then cry i think i made a major mistake by joining this course i cannot stitch even a straight line but you know i read a book called uh, outlier exactly when i when i was going through this phase it said there is a thumb rule okay um, anything in this world if you give 10000 hours to that craft to that art you will become an expert anything on earth even be it rocket science if you spend 10000 hours on it you will become an expert okay so then i thought okay this sounds doable daily rendu manara photo kuda i made calculation and i you know whatever didn't come by practice doing it again and again and again some day it will come right so it came so this 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 10000 hours you also keep in mind okay there is this famous uh, three idiots uh, nanban movie dialogue which i always say uh, ar rahman vandu பேட்ட கொடுத்து கிரிக்கெட் விளையாட சொல்லி இருந்தா அவர் சச்சின் டெண்டுல்கர் ஆயிருக்க முடியாது சச்சின் டெண்டுல்கர் வந்து கீபோர்டை வாசிக்க சொன்னார் டெண்டுல்கர்ஸ்ட் all you have to do is dedicate your time and energy towards something which you think is difficult and then it is doable so challenges can be overcome by this 10000 hours theory okay. thank you well, ma'am so ma nice to hear from you thanks ma'am ma'am have a question fashion industry is itself an exciting field but what's exciting about fashion industry according to you the creation is exciting to me okay and there are uh, it depends on the individual okay for me as i told you when i design i create something and then as an end product when i see it on a human being i i find it very exciting because it's like my child you know i made it but there are several uh, people who get excited when they uh, see their garment on a big screen when it comes on a uh, movie so they become costume designers and then they enjoy doing it so the, what excites you is uh, is different for every single person but for me my when my creation ends up on a human being whom i don't know you know someone who doesn't know me who doesn't know my face who doesn't know anything about me is buying what i created because they like what i created without knowing any background and that person is wearing it which gives me immense pleasure because my work is being recognized by somebody whom i don't know Yeah. Ma'am, uh, are you passionate about something apart from fashion? Mama, <laughs> I, li I like to cook kanna uh, for my family. So, I like to cook, I like to sketch and uh, I like to write. Mm, I used to work for television and radio, right? So, I used to do a lot of script writing and uh, things like that. So, yeah, these are the things. i like i like to watch movies also thank you ma'am ma'am what is the criteria that you take under consideration like uh, when you're creating a you know a, a, a designer outfit or something and uh, what makes you feel that it will become a success uh the end product has to be convincing to me and see for example if you are designing for someone for some occasion uh, how i approach it see being an architect okay i'll show you something i have it right in front of me being an architect right i have a client interaction if i am making something for a single person 
so this was for a client uh, who is a dancer and she wanted a dress for a red carpet uh, and then i the, the the dress she is wearing has to show who she is as a person it has to be her personality right so this is the i may, i had a client interaction with that person and then i wrote down what she likes and uh, what is the best thing that she likes about dance and things like that and then i designed a dress uh based on the 108 karnas of uh, shiva but it was a western dress okay and in incorporating tem- temple jewelry into it and things like that so uh i will be happy if whatever the person is wearing is a part of them you know not just design something without a story if there is a story behind if it shows their personality if it shows something about them to the world then i will be happy that you know whatever they are wearing they will also feel very proud about having it right they won't throw it off that easily because it is them it was designed with a consultation and then it was designed for them it tells their story so that's what i do usually ma'am but that really works with a personal client but if at all you are designing something for a brand like biba or something else so what are the basic things that you take into consideration like what is the criteria that it would meet everyone else's expectation if you are designing for a brand right usually i'll tell you what happens there is something called uh, trend forecasting companies okay these companies will give you some the brands will buy something called a trend book this book will have a lot of inspiration pictures colors for the next season what will be the trend for the next uh, book i mean next uh, season what will be the print and everything okay there will be several ideas what they, what happens is these brand doesn't really forecast much they just put together several things together and say this is going to be the trend the brands buy this trend book and then give it to the designers saying follow these trends and then make garments that look like our brand's dna because as i told you every brand's uh, garments look different you can make out whether this is this brand or fab india you can see a fab india kurta and tell that this is from fab india right even without seeing the label so that's how it is so they all have a trend book to follow so when you are working under a brand that is how it works it's not much of uh, uh, your a place to show your own creativity you will have set guidelines to follow these are the colors you should follow this is the trend book these are the shapes you should follow either which give us some options then you give the options to your senior and then that senior will consult with the marketing team the merchandiser saying will this design work or this design work or this design work okay pick pick these two will work but maybe the sleeve of this can go off let's make this sleeveless so that is how it work it it works more like a product design than like a fashion design it's they see it as a product what sells what doesn't sell what what to make the, there are set guidelines when you are working in a, uh, a brand so you cannot really say that you know i am satisfied with design this is going to work no there are several levels of approvals that will go on in the end the top designer guy will slash the whole thing and saying edu me nalla make everything new and then the design team will again break the head and you know if your if your boss is like steve jobs in the end he will trash everything and say modal la irundhu code podunga so that is how it is if you are working under a brand the story is very different it is more like a product design uh, category and uh, it's not what you feel it's what the whole organization feels in terms of business in the end ma'am actually if okay fine if you already uh, you know you've created a garment and it's out in the market right now and at one point of time you find out that uh, maybe your predictions after a lot of collaborative work your predictions had gone wrong have you ever met any situation like that have you happened many times because it's like making movies only we, we think we have created masterpiece when it hits the screen renda adnale the movie will go off from all the screens right it happens kana because you know uh, we cannot really we can analyze with numbers and say we have sold these many these many so these will work all that happens back end okay but still whether a collection is a hit or miss is purely i don't want to call it luck but i don't know how else to call it also it depends 
you know all your calculations may go wrong in one collection and some collection i mean last collection i made a pal- orange color palazzo pant okay which i thought which was an afterthought because we had some extra fabric i thought i didn't like the print so i said okay idla konjam please pants pannidunga that was a super hit it was sold out first i was like seriously why did you guys like this one so much and buy all these so it happens you can't really judge what will you know you can only predict to a certain level but it's hit or miss it's not in your hands thank, thank you, you so, so much ma'am for your thank wonderful you. presentation it is really motivating your experience and achievement have enthralled us it is a privilege to have you as a guest today because time is getting like so we are going to wind up this section uh, now i welcome our chairman sir dr gopal surendran to share his thought <clears throat> calling her was an experience because after having known her for so long because uh, i'll tell you how i know her her brother and i are classmates and uh, that is how i know her. i've gone to a, that place now all of you are hearing about vandavasi i think the history teachers will know the place the old battle of vandi wash vandi wash so it's a nice place actually so you know i've known her right from she was a little girl and i've seen her grow but her brother and i were very close to each other and unfortunately a few years ago he passed away but still we kept in touch over the years and i watched and even the smallest thing you know when i used to tell her and all that it kept us going and when binu asked me you know you want let's see let's try fashion technology uh, the first person who came to my mind was binu i said i know the right person for this and uh, she proved it without any uh, what do you say without uh, yeah. so it is a privilege having you here very much Thank It's you. a wonderful privilege having you here. I look forward to having you for some more sessions some other time. I know you will do it for us. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, it is wonderful having you here, and on behalf of everyone, let me thank you. Not on my behalf, don't worry. <laughs> hey, so, uh, and uh, students, if you have any doubts or if you want to get in touch, ask me something or some kind of guidance. Uh, you know my name at Vinod Supraja is my Instagram handle. Follow me there, text me there. I will reply for your texts. And uh, whatever questions you have, or if you have any doubts about selecting college or admissions or selecting course or anything, you can always feel free to text. Okay. So thank you, Vinod, for a wonderful evening. Thank It's you. It's a privilege having you with us. Uh, we look forward to having you here physically sometime. Oh, sure. I hope this covid goes and yeah I will come for sure. <laughs> Bye Hari. Good night. Good night everyone. Thank you ma'am. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.